Hello, welcome back to Solid Footings Chapter 5 video review. In this video, we will look at the closing process for revenue and expense accounts. Then we will look at the preparation of the post-closing trial balance. And we will finish up by discussing the steps in the accounting cycle. Let's get started. Before we discuss the closing process, let's do a brief recap of Chapter 4. First, you took Gray through its February transactions. Then, at the end of the accounting period, you prepared the pre-closing trial balance. Next, you prepared the income statement using the ending balances in the revenue and expense accounts. Next, you calculated the retained earnings balance necessary for the balance sheet. And then you prepared the balance sheet using the ending balances in the asset accounts, liability accounts, common stock account, and your calculated retained earnings ending balance. Chapter 5 takes you through the last two steps in the accounting cycle, closing revenue and expense accounts and preparing the post-closing trial balance. On the February close tab, you can see all of the general ledger accounts and the pre-closing trial balance exactly as they were on the February tab at the end of Chapter 4. As we discussed in Chapter 4, transactions that increase or decrease the owner's claim to assets as a result of the operations of the business need to ultimately end up in the retained earnings account. However, these transactions are put into the revenue and the expense accounts to allow a company to easily prepare an income statement. The process of moving the revenue account balance and the expense account balances into the retained earnings account is called the closing process. The entries that you make during the closing process are called closing entries. Let's first close the sales revenue account. As you read in the book, to close the revenue account, you first look at the ending credit balance in the sales revenue account. You then debit the revenue account for an amount equal to its ending credit balance. Next, you credit the retained earnings account for the amount needed to balance the journal entry. Notice when this entry is posted to the general ledger, the sales revenue account now has a zero balance. Also observe that the $13,500 sales revenue credit has appropriately been transferred to the retained earnings account. Now let's close the expense accounts. To close the expense accounts, you must first look at the ending debit balances in all of the expense accounts. You then credit each of the expense accounts for an amount equal to its ending debit balance. Next, you debit the retained earnings account for the amount needed to balance the journal entry. This debit amount is equal to the sum of all the credit entries made to the expense accounts. Observe when this entry is posted to the general ledger, each of the expense accounts now has a zero balance. You can also see that the sum of the debits from each of the expense accounts has appropriately been transferred to the retained earnings account. Notice that we closed the expense accounts with one entry by crediting each of the expense accounts and debiting retained earnings for the sum of the credits. It would also be okay to prepare a closing entry for each expense account individually, and therefore you would debit retained earnings four times instead of once. While this second method is okay and gets you to the same result, it is less efficient and therefore generally not done. Notice that all of the revenue and expense accounts now have an after-close balance of zero. The balance is called after close because it is the balance after the closing process. The balance for the revenue and expense accounts after the closing process should always be zero. Now that you have performed the closing process, you can prepare the post-closing trial balance. The post-closing trial balance lists all of the general ledger account balances after the closing entries have been made. The asset balances, liability balances, and common stock balance are the exact same amount on the pre-closing trial balance 
as they are on the post-closing trial balance. Closing entries do not affect these accounts. The retained earnings balance increased from zero to 3,860 on the post-closing trial balance. The retained earnings amount on the post-closing trial balance should always equal the ending retained earnings balance that you calculated for the balance sheet. Also notice that all of the revenue and expense accounts appropriately have a zero balance on the post-closing trial balance. Gray's accounting cycle is now complete. The post-closing trial balance shows us that the general ledger is in balance after the closing process and that the March accounting cycle is ready to begin. Because revenue and expense accounts are wiped clean during the closing process at the end of every accounting period, they are called temporary accounts. The asset accounts, liability accounts, common stock account, and the retained earnings account are called permanent accounts because they are never closed. On page 50 in your solid footing book, you saw a list of the nine steps in the accounting cycle. You have completed each of these steps when working through chapters four and five. Make sure that you read through these steps so that you feel comfortable with the sequence before beginning chapter six. In chapter six, you will complete each of the nine steps in the accounting cycle for the month of March. Chapter six is a good self-test of all of the concepts that you have learned up to this point in solid footing. I'll see you again for the next video.